Well, greetings and welcome to the beautiful colonial city of San Miguel de Allende in Mexico. I've been here for a few days now with my wife. We're on a vacation and this is a city that I've always wanted to come to. It has some of the most beautiful, uh, historic Spanish colonial architecture, really lovely uh, cobblestone streets all over the old part of town here. There's old uh, cathedrals, there's boutiques, um, there's really fantastic uh, art galleries and studio spaces. A lot of artists have uh, relocated to San Miguel and have set up shop here. And then on top of that, there are the restaurants. I mean, there's something like 500 restaurants just in this one town and some of the best restaurants in the world. I mean, we have not had a bad meal um, at all since we've been here. And we've been here for about five days now and just some really incredible food here. If you're a bit of a foodie and you like architecture and you like old uh, romantic kind of colonial uh, cities, like if you were to go to uh, some place in Europe, San Miguel de Allende is such a great destination in Mexico, especially if you're like us and you live in the United States and it's not uh, too far of a plane ride. Just a really great place to get away. This is my first time here. I've always wanted to come and uh, we've just been having an awesome time exploring San Miguel. The reason I'm making this video today is because one of the things that I've been thinking about while I'm on this trip has been lenses and uh, the gear that I typically bring with me on a trip. For this trip, I just threw into my camera bag all the typical stuff that I bring with me when I'm doing landscape photography. I typically bring, you know, like at least one prime lens, like a 50 millimeter, uh, three different zooms, everything from wide angle to, um, you know, like a, a very long telephoto, like a 70 to 200, um, just to make sure that I have all the different focal lengths covered and that I have a lens for every possible situation that I might encounter. The problem with that though, is that then you end up with just a terribly heavy bag with a lot of different lenses, lenses that you uh, may or may not use. And then you drag this heavy telephoto all the way down to Mexico. I don't know what's going on behind me. And, uh, and it just ends up being too much. And so one of the things that I've been thinking about is, you know, if I was to pack my bag again, and if I was to just limit myself to only one lens, you know, just keep it simple, pack a small bag, a carry-on that I can just bring on the plane and bring one lens with me, which lens out of all the different uh, Canon EF mount lenses that I have would I bring with me on this trip? And which lens would I feel the least compromised with? You know, which lens would give me the most, uh, the most range when it comes to all the different types of photos that I would want to take? here in San Miguel. And I think at the end of the day, there's, it's really no contest. If I were to pack one lens and bring it with me, for me, I think the best overall travel lens for the Canon EF mount system would be the Canon 24 to 70 millimeter F 2.8. All right, so what makes this the best travel lens? Well, there are a few different factors which I'm going to cover in this video. First of all, let's talk about focal length. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a zoom lens, which covers everything from 24 millimeters to 70 millimeters. All the way down at one end of the lens is 24. 24 is what you would typically use for wide angle shots. If you're on the street and you wanna capture um, the facades of some buildings, perhaps some streetscapes and other types of photos like that, 24 millimeters is, for me at least, I think the most usable amount of wide angle, especially on a full frame camera, like the one I'm carrying here, which is a Canon 5D Mark IV. Full frame 24 millimeter on a lens like this is more than enough wide angle. Sure, there are situations where having something more than 24 millimeters would be helpful. The problem though, is that once you get past that, you start getting a lot of distortion and curvature in, um, in the subjects that you're shooting and it just is not the most usable. It just takes more time and care and attention to get uh, a good photo um, out of a focal length that's wider than 24 millimeter. Then all the way at the other end of the focal length range, we have 70 millimeter. Now again, like wide angle, there are situations where you might want a zoom that's deeper than 70 millimeters, say like 100 or maybe even something like 200 would be helpful. 
But by and large, especially if you're wandering around a city like this and doing exploring and, and you just want to get some portrait shots, maybe some with like a shallow depth of field uh, or some detail images of, um, you know, like architecture or maybe some uh, like street style of photography of like people on the street and you just want a little more um, range in your zoom. 70 millimeters is, I think, more than enough. And then in between 24 and 70, obviously you have other focal lengths, which are um, fantastic. You know, focal lengths like 30, 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter, very natural looking focal lengths to the human eye, which is nice if you're doing uh, photography that's a little more like a documentary uh, style, something that, you know, doesn't appear to be uh, too zoomed or too wide angle, just something which looks very natural. It's, it's a type of uh, photography and a focal length that I enjoy using uh, quite a lot. So with this one lens, this one very uh, versatile lens, you have a fantastic focal length range of 24 to 70, which will cover everything that you will likely encounter and need during your trip. Now, the other thing that makes this, I think, such a great lens is its aperture. This has a maximum aperture of f2.8, which means that when you dial your aperture down to f2.8 when mounted on your camera, you're going to have uh, a lot of light coming into the camera. Not as much light as uh, a lens that would have a maximum aperture of, like, say, f1.8 or 1.4, but 2.8 is actually pretty good, which helps a lot when you're shooting handheld. So if you're doing like a portrait on the street and you want a shallow depth of field, or you're in a semi low light situation, you can just open that aperture all the way up to f2.8 and you can still shoot without having to increase your uh, ISO too much or decrease your shutter speed. And the problem with shutter speed, of course, is that once you start to dial down that shutter speed, then you start to introduce camera shake and that's no fun. So it's really helpful to have uh, f2.8, I feel like, uh, especially in lower light situations and when you're shooting handheld. Now, the other thing that makes this just such a great lens, I think, is the overall build quality. These L lenses made by Canon are some of the best. They're weather sealed. They're um, just engineered so beautifully. They're rugged. They're just awesome pieces of hardware. Now, last but certainly not least is image quality. With a lot of zooms, and this is one of the reasons why you hear photographers oftentimes preferring prime lenses that just have a fixed focal length, is the fact that with zoom lenses, because there's variability in the focal length, there's variability in the image quality as well. So depending on what aperture you're, you have dialed in and what focal length you're using, the quality of your image, the overall sharpness of the image, especially from the center of the image to the corners, how much distortion you have in the corners, is kind of up in the air. You know, not all lenses are created, not all zoom lenses are created equal. And that's what makes this particular model of lens so special, I think. This 24 to 70 f2.8 is the fact that you can shoot this lens wide open at f2.8, 24 millimeter, and you will get a beautiful photo, sharp from center to corner with very little distortion. And it really doesn't matter what aperture you use, what focal length you use, no matter what you choose, your images are going to be fantastic with this lens. I think you could actually make the case that 50 millimeter on this 24 to 70 millimeter is actually better than a prime lens like the Canon EF 50 millimeter, which I think is like an F 1.4. I would actually rather shoot 50 millimeters on this than that prime lens because the image quality of 50 millimeter on this lens is just so good. The other one is okay. I've always found it to be a little bit soft, um, but on here, on this lens, it's just fantastic. So long story short, no matter what focal length you're using, what aperture you have dialed in, you're always going to get superb images with this lens. Now, as you may know, at the time of this video, there are some newer, higher-end uh, mirrorless cameras that are being made by Canon, like the EOS R and the EOS RP, which have a new RF mount, which is different than the EF mount, which is what this lens uses and, and many other Canon cameras use the EF mount system as well. EF has been around for a long time. RF is very new, and as part of that, there are nowhere near as many lenses. 
Canon is slowly starting to roll out uh, some new RF lenses, including a 24 to 70 millimeter, which is very similar uh, to this but designed for the RF mount system. Now that lens, as far as I can tell by reading reviews of it, is a fantastic lens. I think it's just as good, if not better in some ways, than this 24 to 70. But that RF version of the 24 to 70 millimeter is expensive. It is way more expensive than the older EF version. And I think you could actually make a pretty effective argument for not buying the RF version of that lens, especially if you know you just spent a bunch of money buying the camera body, it would make sense, I think, to just use an EF to RF mount adapter. So you can use that adapter and then put on an older EF mount lens like this one, this 24 to 70 millimeter on that EOS R or EOS, EOS RP, and you'll have superb image quality. You will have a fantastic lens and you will save a lot of money compared to buying the RF version of the same lens. The other reason why using an EF lens on an RF uh, mount system like the EOS R or EOS RP is actually better, in my view, is the fact that if you happen to have another Canon camera like this one, which has an EF uh, mount, that means that you can use this 24 to 70 millimeter on that camera body on the DSLR, or you can use it on your mirrorless camera. It just gives you more flexibility. Unfortunately, the RF mount lens is not backwards compatible. You can't use an RF lens, at least at the time of this video, on an EF mount system. Only You can only go from EF to RF, not the other way around. Now, this lens isn't perfect. There is one thing about it that could definitely use an upgrade at, at some point in the future. I don't know if we're ever going to see it, but image stabilization would be a really nice feature to add to this lens because it just doesn't have it. The way that Canon has always designed uh, the cameras, at least in the time of this video, in the summer of 2019, is that image stabilization is always relegated to the lens. It's always the responsibility of the lens to handle stabilization because Canon cameras do not have, unlike other camera bodies that you'll find out there on the market these days from other manufacturers, they do not have in-body stabilization. I'm sure at some point in the future that's probably going to end up changing as they release um, newer models of the cameras, but right now at least, in-body stabilization is not a thing. So stabilization, which helps you get just sharper photos, especially when you're shooting handheld, is the responsibility of the lens. And for whatever reason, Canon has never integrated image stabilization to the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8. I really wish they would. Unfortunately, um, it's just not a feature on the 24 to 70, but you do have those extra stops of light. You do uh, have the ability to open this up all the way to f2.8, which means that you can then shoot at a faster shutter speed, which will help get you sharper photos when shooting handheld. So you just have to, when using this lens, not rely on the lens so much to be handling, handling stabilization. You just have to make sure that your shutter speed is just a little bit higher uh, than perhaps you would normally on a different lens. All right, so in summary, best lens out of all the different lenses that are available for the Canon system that you can bring with you on a trip, the one lens that you probably should not leave home without, the one lens that you could use on a desert island if you could only bring one with you, it would absolutely be the Canon 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8 Mark II. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, comments, or if you have your own travel lens that you think is actually better than the 24 to 70 millimeter, I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment below. See you next time. Oh